Enemies spawn our appeal, reject our message, oppose our arguments, and despise our person, but they are helpless against our prayer. Prayers! Praise! Say it out! Because! Welcome to the Wonders of Prayer with Rev. Dr. Moses Aronsula, President, Getimani Prayer Ministries International and National Director, Nigeria Prayers, who as a minister primarily called of God to be a revivalist, teacher and an intercessor has ministered in at least five of the six continents of the world. Now, it is your turn for a turnaround. Power to compel your helpers. Lord, I pray this night that your glory will tabernacle over this meeting. Amen. Do what only God can do Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Power to compel your help. Many of us don't know that. A man may never reach the zenith and the apex of his glory in life except men lend helping hands to him. We said that clearly last year. How far a man goes in life is determined primarily by the amount of help he receives. All things be equal. How far a man goes in life is a function of the helps he receives quality and quantity of help he receives or things be equal hard work thank God for it skill thank God for it knowledge thank God for it but without help and help us your knowledge may amount to nothing your skill may amount to nothing. Your hard work may not pay off at the end of the day, except help comes for you. And a number of people are destiny stranded today. Despite all they contain, they are loaded. But there are no helps and helpers. So they end up frustrated. The marketer. And people of less intelligence, people of less skill have overtaken them. Perhaps many of them are even their bosses. Okay? People that you can teach ABC of that job, ABC of your profession. It's now your ogre. Why? Because somebody lifted him up above you. I want to say to you today your time for lifting has come in the name of Jesus Christ. So every man needs help and helper. Those who don't even know anything at all. But because strategic help showed off for them in time, they are there up and everybody is looking at them. Courtesy of the quality and the quantity and the timely help they received. I have good news for some people today. And there are 78 of you according to divine instruction. God is saying, He said, Your help is long overdue. Long overdue. And He says, You activate it on this altar. 
You have waited for long enough in the name of the one that sent me. A few days to come. Your help and help us shall show up. Seventy, I can't talk, that's the, as I was in about it, it was the fifth time, number five time they are telling me, don't forget what I told you, don't forget, seventy eight of them, he said your help is long overdue, he said they should be activated, I stand at this altar to activate your help in the name of Jesus Christ, I command your help to manifest, I command your help to show up, let your help us manifest, let your help show up in the name of Jesus Lift up your two and say, My helpers, my helpers, manifest. Long overdue. I need to tell you that not all helps come voluntarily. Oh, somebody has served me. Oh, somebody gave me a contract. Oh, somebody gave me one million naira. Oh, somebody did this, somebody did that. And you are so joyful. Yes, sir. That's how much you know. You may never know what that fellow that helped you went through before he finally surrendered the help. Are you with me? They won't tell you the divine harassment, particularly if you are going to the mountain to pray or to the wilderness or you are here and you are praying. They won't tell you what happened behind the scene. The angelic harassment, the bombardment in the night, the nightmares, the threat of God before they finally reluctantly surrender their help. They won't tell you. They just say, all right, come and have the come But behind the scene, they face certain ordeals. So, not all helps come willingly and voluntarily. Oh, somebody this is yes, sir. He may even smile and laugh when he's doing that, but he has wept and he's doing that reluctantly. Maybe he does even have that much money, but God gave him a matching order. You don't do that, you are finished. So he goes anywhere he can obtain that thing in order to survive. Because God is putting pressure on him. And whoever is in charge of your help, who is reluctant today, heaven will put pressure on them. You didn't hear what I said. I said, the God I serve shall so put pressure on them in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's why we're talking about power to compel the help that you need. How do I compare the help that I need? How can those the Lord have given my help who are in custody of my help, what I dearly need? How can they let go finally? How can they deliver? I read from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Let's keep that foundational scripture. Go to chapter 9. Now, a persecutor, militant, killer, had been arrested by the Almighty. Saul of Tarsus, on the way to Damascus, on a mission to scatter the church, to persecute Christians, and possibly arrest them and bring them for judgment in Jerusalem. So, he had a visitation from heaven. Both negatively and positively. Visitation. Christ appeared to him. God knocked him down. And then instantly, he went blind. So when he got up, he wanted to see. And lo and behold, everything was dark. Couldn't see nothing. So, he gave his hand to those who were around him to lead him to Damascus. But while he was on the ground, the Lord said, So, so, why do you persecute me? It's dangerous for you to kick against the thorns. You are kicking against me. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus Christ, whom you persecute. Now arise, go to the city, stay there, and it shall be told unto you 
what you shall do. So he staggered up and then he was led by the hand to the city. And there the Bible says he stayed. Dark. He couldn't see nothing. For the first time in his life, a militant was totally disarmed completely. He was powerless. Everyone after your life, if they don't give up, they go blind in the name of Jesus. Everyone after your destiny, the Lord will disarm them completely in the name of Jesus. Restless persecutor, restless militant. God disarmed for the first time. He stayed for three days immobile. He couldn't move because what can you do without eyes? Restless. The man was full of energy, used in the wrong way. But for the first time, he stayed still because his eyes have been taken out. If that man, that power pursue you, don't give up. The Lord will take out their eyes. So, the neutralized militant was there. For the first time in his life, he began to pray. That's where we are. Chapter 9 of the book of Acts of the Apostles. And the Bible says in verse number 9, And it was three days without sight, Neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go to the street that is called Straight, and inquire of the house of one called so, of Tatos, and behold, he prayed. Somebody said he prayed. On that corner, he prayed. That is, is at prayer. Is continuously praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. Verse number thirteen. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints at Jerusalem. And have the authority from the chief priests to bind all them that call upon the name. That's the reason he's here. So, I cannot go. I'm afraid of this man. I risk my life by delivering the message. Lord, impossible. I can't. I fear for my life. For we had many evil. If I go there, it's like walking deliberately into the lion's den. Lord, can you please excuse me from this errand? And look at verse number 15. But the Lord said to him, Go thy way. That language is very strong. In another translation, God said, get out, move, go thy way. For it's a chosen vessel to bring my name to the Gentiles. Go your way. You don't argue with a person you call Lord. Get out and move. Get Money Prayer Ministries International invites you to the International Prayer Academy 2017 with the theme, Personal, Corporate and Territorial Divine Visitation, Ministry, Reverend Dr. Moses Arasiola and other faculty members, date 18th to 24th, September 2017, venue, Get Money World Prayer Center, Eleele Ranabar, Eleele Ibano, Nigeria. For further inquiries, call 0802-302-7551. Or 0805 848 or visit our website at getsompray.com. The academy provides accommodation only for participants from outside Nigeria. The International Prayer Academy 2017. Here we see a reluctant helper. Here we see somebody who has been praying. I need help. If only I can see. Oh Lord, open my eyes. 
Never again will I persecute your people. Use me anywhere you want to use me. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. Restore thou my son. He kept on praying. And the Bible said to underscore his seriousness. He neither ate nor drank. Three days I in this sleep. Three straight days. Oh God of heaven, Jesus that appeared to me on the way, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. And so, wise at prayer, the Lord gave him a vision of his helper, prospective helper. There's a man called Ananias. It's one of the people you came to persecute, all right? And that man will come and lay hands on you. And he saw in that vision, the man walking in, laying hands on him, and then his eyes is even so. So he knew that help was coming. Are you with me? He knew that help was coming. Oh, I thank God for the first time in his life, being born again a couple of hours ago, he had entered into the realm of visions and revelation. And the first thing he saw his helper coming to open his eyes. Ha! Ah! So finally, I will see. I will not die blind. So he must have rejoiced. But he kept on praying. And then the Lord went to the helper and said, Helper, I put supernatural power in your hands. Now, go to the man that is praying. Lay your hands on him and open his eyes. And the man said, You know, when the Lord said, Ananias, Ananias, what did he say? Here am I, Lord. When you say, Lord, you submit absolutely. So he has said, Lord, Olua, you don't say no to an Olua. But when he had the name so, ah, so Lord, I cannot. This is walking to my death. We the man may be pretending after all. And we had all the evil he has done, and he had the warrant of arrest. Anybody that called upon your name, including me, one of the leaders here, Lord, I cannot. That is total refusal. He will have wished so died blind. And when he turned down that around, the Lord now used the big stick. Go thy way. You don't argue with me. Get out and deliver the help that I gave you. After all, you are not the owner of the healing power. Go deliver it. That is my command. So the Lord thankfully and Ananias came. Are you with me? Without any formality. With fear and trembling, he entered the house, not the door. Is there any soul of Tarsus here? They said, the man is in the inner room, pray. And he said, take me there. <coughs> and he got to the inner room. Are you soul of Tarsus? He said, yes. The Lord Jesus Christ that appeared to you on the way. No good morning was happening to you. No formality, no protocols. Because he was somebody compelled by God to come against his will. Okay? He said, the Lord that appeared to you on the way to Damascus has me to lay hands on you that you might receive your sight and you might be filled with the Holy Ghost and then baptized in water. And he must say, here am I. He laid hands on him and his eyes opened. Help finally delivered. I stand on this altar. Anyone in custody of your help who is resisting, arguing with the Almighty, I command them now in the name of the law. Arise, deliver your help. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. My Ananias. My Ananias. Arise. Arise. Deliver my help. Prayer. Jesus name we pray listen to me it is not when you are praying listen before the arrival of a problem right before the arrival of any need the helper is already prepared of God are you with me it's not when you started praying that God is looking around scattering around. how no 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 sir before the arrival of any problem helper and help are already on ground the problem 
is for you to connect with your helpers. Is somebody listening to me? Before they arrive on the problem, the help you need, the helper you need, they are there. Sometimes they are very reluctant. That's where prayer has to come in. Fasting has to come in. That the Lord may use the big stick and overrule their objection so that they can deliver the help. Are you with me? And many of them have sincere objection why they should not help. But that is not what matters. Your help I give be given to them by God and they are under a divine mandate to deliver. Everyone who has any objection to your help tonight, heaven overruled the air. <coughs> I say, heaven overrules there. Is somebody listen to me? So, Ananias refused. And the Lord said, thou must deliver that help. For every soul of Tassos, there is always an Ananias prepared helper. Are you with me? For every Moses who says to the Lord in the book of Exodus, Lord, I'm a stutterer. I'm a stammerer. I can't go like this to the followers of Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Before I finish talking, I came from the palace. I know the great orators and philosophers surrounding the throne. If I can't, they would think I'm stupid. I'm dullard. Okay? So, I cannot go there. You know that I'm a stammerer. And since you started speaking with me, I'm not able to speak articulately. Oh, God. Now, if I go there and I pro they say get out of this place you idiot because there are orators who are there Lord send another person that was the fourth objection he gave the Lord and the Lord said I ordain you for this job that the reason I spare your life you have to deliver. Now because you say you can't speak well and you need somebody to help, I prepare your helper. Aaron, your brother, is a fine speaker. Eloquent speaker is coming to meet you. And within three hours, Aaron showed up from nowhere. He had an helper. Are you with me? When Ruth needed a husband, <coughs> And she began to gather food from different farms. Unknown to her, the first place she got to was the farm of the potential husband, Boaz. And before Ruth came, they had told Boaz a relation. Ah, that girl who lost her husband in Moab followed her mother-in-law and came to this land. What a wonderful girl. The other one disappeared. Was she be slaving like a house girl for the mother-in-law? What a wonderful woman. The ears of that man were full of the good deeds of this woman. And because it was a mysteriously single man, something enters the man. This could be my wife. So he was already prepared. So when Ruth came and slept in his farm, he said, it had been fully told me. What to teach your mother-in-law? You come under the wings of the God of Israel, he will show you that the God of Israel never disappoints. Are you with me? The husband was prepared before Ruth came. <clears throat> your helper is somewhere now. Holding your help. Sometimes, reluctant and say, that person came from that family, came from that town, came from this. I cannot. I come with the anointing of God to compel them on this altar to deliver your help in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Saul was a destiny means road. The son of Kish, the first king of Israel, roaming around then his, the donkey of his father got missing. And the father said, go and look for the donkey. Go and look for the donkey. So himself and his servant started roaming around. And when they roamed around for more than three days, unknown to him, he was the prepared king. And a day before, the Bible said, the Lord whispered in the hands of Samuel, 
By this time tomorrow, I will send a young man to you looking for donkey. That is just a camouflage. The real mission is for you to anoint him to be king of his enter into his full destiny. So the second day, the man showed up, said, Are you the prophet? Can you tell us how we can find the donkey of our father? The man said, That donkey have been found two days ago. You are just here for destiny encounter. Are you not the king of Israel? God told him ahead of time. His helper to make him king was already waiting. I profess, sir, anybody that God has whispered to, to help you, who is holding back, I commanded my fire to surrender. Somebody say, my helper, surrender. My helper, surrender. My helper, surrender. Say it three times. Are you listening to me, somebody? An Ethiopian eunuch was coming from Jerusalem riding on a chariot. And uh, a man was to convert him and bring Christianity to Africa. Philip was doing some other things. And then finally, the Spirit of God tell him, transported him and he found himself on the way in the desert. And he saw a chariot. And the Spirit of the Lord whisper in his ears, join yourself to this chariot. And ask the man whether you understand what is written. And he ran to the chariot of Ethiopia, you know, understand it thou, what thou readest. He want to say, how can I understand it? except somebody explain to me. He said, I've been sent to you to explain the scripture to you and to bring you to the Lord. Now, South, the first African man got born again and brought Christianity to Africa. His helper was already waiting around in the desert. Everywhere your helper is, I command the everlasting hand to arrest them in the name of Jesus Christ. 